George oh, Lucas murders you. someone. Murders. What? You want the original cut? Well, this is what I'll do to you. GL, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what the f Oh, God dang it, son of a bitch. If I find out who wrote this prompt, I'm going to find you. I am going to find you, and I'm going to hurt you. Not really. I, I, I was just trying to be funny. If you want to talk about roller coasters, in terms of just... Not, not literal roller coasters, though I love literal roller coasters. Um, if you want to talk about, like, roller coasters in terms of quality... Look no further than Resident Evil. Resident Evil went through several phases of peaks and valleys. Peaks and valleys. Peaks, planes out, and then peaks again, and then... Um... I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. But... We had the original Resident Evil, which was tremendous. And by that, I mean the game. Let's talk about the games first. First game, amazing. Like, the, uh, well, I'll, I'll just say it. The first three games, amazing. I'll, like, love those games. Love them. Um, then we had a bunch of different styles of games. I think uh, the Outbreak series, and we had, like, lo uh, like Survivor, uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, which was a limited release, Code Veronica and Veronica X. Uh, and they were trying to figure out what they were going to do for, like, the next full Resident Evil game. Uh, that's when we got Resident Evil 4, which was directed by Shinji Mikami, and it's a lot of people's, like, in terms of, like, like one of the greatest games of all time. It's been re-released again and again and again and again and again. It's been re-released on everything. I think it's actually available on iPhone for you to play. Like, just, you just, like, boot up your iPhone and you can play Resident Evil 4. Boom. Um, and then Resident Evil 5, this is when, you know, we had the, you know, we had the first peaks with, like, the first three Resident Evil games, then we had the valleys with um, uncertainty with, you know, the ones in between Resident Evil 4, then we had Resident Evil 4, then we had Resident Evil 5, which wasn't terrible, but you could definitely tell that horror was not the emphasis anymore action and like set pieces were and quick time events lord have mercy the quick time events hey punching a boulder am i right Ay. and then of course the true bottom out that basically caused capcom to hit the panic button was resident evil 6 when resident evil 6 came out here's the thing i played it i got it the first i got it like when it first came out I was excited. I wanted to see what it was going to be all about. And Zach was supposed to play through it with me because we played through Resident Evil 5 together, and we had fun. We had fun playing Resident Evil 5 together. But Resident Evil 6, he wasn't able to come up, and he was actually out of town, I believe. So I was like, all right, I'll play through this alone. And I played through it the entire night, and I beat it. And by beat it, I mean I beat every single campaign. I beat... Jake's, uh, Jake and Sherry's campaign, I beat Leon's campaign, I beat, uh, Chris's campaign, and I even beat Ada's campaign, the one that opens up after you beat all three of the, uh, main camp, the original campaigns. And then, of course, we had Resident Evil 7, which, or, and then after Resident Evil 6, there was a complete and total reinvention of the series, where they went back to basics with, uh, the, uh, Resident Evil, uh, Revelations games. Uh, mostly they were on mobile, but then they released them later on on console. And then we had Resident Evil 7. Now, this is where, like, this is where I think Capcom really started to hit home runs with the franchise again. Uh, not to say that, not to say that 4 was not a watershed moment, but, well, it was. But in terms of, like, really bringing horror, like, full horror back into it. I think it did tremendous work, and I think, I'm hoping that in a, I, and I'm hoping that, uh, okay, here are my thoughts so far from like Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 7, amazing, I would say easily a 9 out of 10, um, Resident Evil 2 remake, probably a 9.5 if not a 10 out of 10, it is quite possibly one of the more perfect Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 3 remake, 
They cut so much out of it just so that they could rush and have it released. That's a that's the problem. You see, Capcom can't get out of their own damn way. And here's the thing. I I really wanted to I really wanted to like Resident Evil 3 remake, but they just cut so much out of it and the the amount of BS that you ha that was going through with it. I mean, they said the multiplayer was fun, but again, that's not why we're playing Resident Evil. And then we had uh, most recently, I, I, okay, on the terms of Resident Evil 3 remake, I'm really hoping that they do a director's cut of it and they include all the stuff that was cut out of the original release of the original release of the Resident Evil 3 remake. I'm really hoping they do that. I I hope that that is that becomes a reality. <sighs> And then here earlier this year, we had Resident Evil Village, which again continues on the storyline that we had in Resident Evil 7, and it was amazing. I mean, really, it was really good. Me and Nick both played through it. Uh, Nick has actually played through it multiple times, and he's actually, like, gotten really good about getting through it fast. Uh, me, I enjoyed, like, the, the body horror. <laughs> Lady Dimitrescu. Yeah, of course, I know everyone... You know, strangle me, vampire mommy. Yeah, all all that fun stuff. Ugh, thirst, you thirsty, thirsty boys and girls. It's not just boys. I've seen plenty of women out there who are just like, I want her to pick me up and I want her to pick me up and just like carry me everywhere like a baby. I saw some women post that and I'm just like, y'all need help. <laughs> who am I to say? I mean, I like tall voluptuous women. What can I say? <laughs> But, um, and now we're at a bit of a crossroads with the Resident Evil games because I don't know what they're going to do next, but there were things in Resident Evil 8 that I was afraid was going to happen. It's like what, what they did with Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 5. Uh, Resident Evil 7 was more focused on the horror, whereas Resident Evil 8 had some action set pieces in it. But it was sort of at the end, in which... That's the thing. I mean, like, as long as there's, like, a clear distinction of separation, I don't mind it that much. But I'm also interested to see what they're going to do with the next Resident Evil game because I don't want to give away spoilers as to what happened, you know, for people out there who haven't played through 7 and 8. If you have not, it's a you're doing yourself a disservice. Check those games out. They are tremendous. Um, but, yeah. That's the video games. In terms of movies... Let me just put this as gently as I can. The vast majority of them, anyway. The only Resident Evil movie that I kind of liked was the first one. And um, the main reason for that is because of some of the visuals were really good. Some of the like zombie designs were really good. Ugh. I thought the storyline was okay, but again, it's just Paul W.S. Anderson, you know... Making making films just to show off how awesome his wife is, which I like Mila Jovovich, but uh, how many films do we have in that in that series? I, I think like six or seven. Ugh, it was a mess. It was a mess of films, and it only just kept getting more and more ridiculous as it went on. And story wise, none of the shit made sense. It was just ugh. It's, it's hard to watch. The, it's hard to go back and watch those films. It really is. I hate it. And then we had some of the CG films uh, that were pretty good. Uh, and then we have now the Netflix series, which a lot of people have said is really good. And now, here we are today with Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, here's the thing. I was excited to hear that James Wan was involved with this. When I heard James Wan had uh, had looked at you know making a uh, make, uh, let me actually check real quick. He checked. He wanted to make a uh, Resident Evil movie for some time. There it is. Welcome to Raccoon City, produced by. Yep, James Wan is nowhere attached to this. I remember that, yeah, James Wan expressed interest in the project. Later, uh, Constantin Film Chairman 
Martin Moshkovitz, uh, said that the reboot series was in development. Same month, Juan was called to produce the reboot with a script by Greg Russo. Uh, Roberts was hired as both writer and director, and both Juan and Russo left the project. And here's the problem. When I found out about that, when I found out that Juan, James Juan, was no longer involved with this, I got worried. And then when I heard that they were handing it off to Johan Roberts, the man who did 47 Meters Down, and, and the sequel, I... I started to get really worried. Here's to hoping that my fears will not be, you know, will not uh, be realized. And that we will actually get a good Resident Evil film. I'm hope, well, Because here's the thing. Comic book films are now, like, have, like, taken off. Like, they've been taken seriously. Like, so much has been dumped into them. And so many people are taking comic book movies seriously now. Video games, I think, are the next step. And I'm really hoping, I'm praying with every fiber of my being that they get this right. Now, I've heard people say to watch both trailers of this, the official trailer, you know, the one here in the States, and then the international trailer to watch both of them, just to get full context. And I don't know what to think. I'm I'm just, I'm, I, I've been told by various people about this, and I've tried to refrain from looking at or like people spoiling anything. But I guess here we go. This is Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Official trailer. And then after this, we'll watch the international trailer. Well, that is if I feel like it. We'll see. Anyway. Come on. Oh, shit. Damn it. Thought I had it up on screen. Come on. Every story has a beginning. Claire. Discover the origin of evil. Why are you back here, Claire? Your conspiracies weren't true when we were kids. They're not true now. We need to expose Umbrella. There's Leon. Watch this. I'm afraid, Claire. I'm afraid of what they're going to do to this town. Is that Umbrella? They have an incident. I'm talking Chernobyl, if you know what I mean. People are getting sick. Well, there's a the clear. Let the world know what's really going on. We have to contain this. Wait. Was that what's going go? on? It is. Wait, so we're seeing Raccoon City and we're seeing the mansion. What were Umbrella doing here? This is where they're experimenting on him. Oh no. Split up. Oh, the stuff. Yep, knew it. The iconic shot. We gotta get out of here. We're gonna take God. him all down. Okay, there's such a thing as, you know, pandering to your, uh, here's the thing, I don't mind being pandered to sometimes, I don't mind, you know, just like, hey, you remember this from the game? Here it is in like film form, I don't mind that, but uh, here's the thing about trying to do, like, when you try too hard to be, uh, to be like, straight on the nose 
with this, it can get insulting. And, and I'm not going to doubt the fact that, you know, the person who made this, you know, that Johan Roberts is probably a fan of the Resident Evil games. I wouldn't doubt it. But in terms of the quality that I'm seeing here, in terms of the the designs of the liquor, the designs of what looks like Dr. Birkin uh, and his monster form... Uh, seem very generic. They don't seem like they like they. It looks like they just took carbon copies from the game, and instead of like doing something that l makes it really pop in film, they're doing the. Like, uh. All right, that's that's the first one. Let's get into the uh, international trailer. Let's see what's different here. What are you doing out hitchhiking on a night like this, anyway? Oh, boy. It's to live here, you said. Raccoon City. Better you than me. Watch out! No. Ah, oh, no. Okay. We need to go now. Lock the gates. Okay, so... Are you back here? This whole town's been poisoned. If we don't contain this, it could threaten the whole world. Shall we go? Come on. So... Okay, the wait... What were Umbrella doing here? They were experimenting on him. This is my life's work. I'm not giving it to anybody. Okay. This is Chief Irons. Pick up your damn radio! gonna destroy this place. Okay. I just really want to get out of this town. Okay. I'll say this. That was a much better trailer. That was a much better trailer than the than the other one. I mean, this the cut of this trailer was a lot better for this one than than the than the other one that had the the song uh, "What's Going On" in it. And yeah, this actually like that trailer actually was a lot better at getting me excited for it because of its presentation. You see, I'm hoping that uh, you see. Trailers can be misleading, very misleading, uh, because you can be hyped for a trailer, and then you watch the film, and you're just like, ugh, you're just, you just don't, you, you, it just doesn't live up to the hype that the trailer had, in which, if I would have seen this trailer, if I would have seen only this trailer right here, uh, and I watch the film and it's bad, I would probably be disappointed, like, more, but when I saw the first trailer... I think I saw more of the potential problems that the film is going to have. But again, I don't know. I really don't know. I... God. So, all in all, yeah. This, uh... This... I'm probably going to watch this in theaters. Now that I'm actually going to watch films in theaters more often. Sorry. My shoulders have been bugging me all, like since the other day <sighs> but yeah um, there's things about this that I like things about this that I don't like more on the stuff that I don't but I'd say this is about four, like a 40% excited for uh, after watching both of these trailers I like I, I love the Resident Evil franchise I think it it is not done justice by the uh, by the films that have been released about it. 
and I hate the fact that that's a reality, but to see the characters come to life and be like more accurate to their video game counterparts, I like that, but I'm afraid that it's going to be try too hard to be accurate and sacrifice because the thing is these games are hours and hours long they're like playing through the games they take multiple hours some take sometimes they take up to I think six to eight hours sometimes more and there's a lot to condense down especially if you're going to do the first two games in one film like that's a lot dude because you're, because we're doing the Raccoon City storyline. That's that's evident. Because you know we saw Leon, we saw Claire, we saw the Raccoon City Police Department, we saw we saw like uh, the gates breaking down uh, at at the department. We saw Doctor Birkin. We saw what looks like an underground, uh, you know, the underground uh, like area, the research facility, uh, and then of course we also saw the mansion, which also. You know, seeing both of them in the same film, I, I, if they're able to tell a two-pronged story, and then eventually, like, as the two stories move together, we get, like, the big ending with both sides together by working it out. You know, Claire, Chris, Leon, Jill, uh, and Sherry as well. I mean, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, but I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. But I will probably watch this in theaters... And I'll give my honest opinion on it as a Resident Evil fan and as a fan of, you know, just as someone who wants to see this franchise succeed outside of video games. So hopefully we'll see what happens. So until next time, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'll see you then. Peace out.